Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm here with my good friend, Aaron Nace. Aaron Nace, what's up? Say hello, everybody. Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome to day two <laughs> of photo editing. <laughs> day two of photo editing. So yesterday, we got into Lightroom, did a bunch of awesome edits in Lightroom, did a little bit of Photoshop, but today is the Photoshop day. So we've dubbed it the greatest hits of Photoshop with Aaron Nace, and we're going to get all... We're going to get into that all in one sec, but as always, we got a little bit of housekeeping items to take care of. So I do want to shout out that we have a new set of Photoshop daily creative challenges going on right now with Voodoo Val. We're live Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, so make sure to check those out. Also, we are doing an artist spotlight today. So don't forget to submit your recommendations for creatives to highlight um, on the chat tab that's right above us. So we will be doing that with about 30 minutes to go for the stream. but. Without further ado, Aaron Nace, hi. Hey, what's hey. Up? Let oh. us know what's going on for today and what the game plan is. Paco, good to see you again, dude. Good to see you again, man. I had a lot of fun yesterday. This is going to be version two of more fun with Aaron and Paco. Yeah. Photoshop style. Photoshop style. And good to see everyone in the chat. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're stepping it up a little bit. Yesterday we focused on landscapes and we did a lot in Lightroom. So kind of the whole idea behind this stream with photo editing was like, okay, day one, let's do landscape stuff. Let's do like general photo editing, things that can make any one of your images better. Focus on Lightroom. And then today we're kind of doing the greatest hits in Photoshop. Things that just keep coming back over and over and over again. Like, how do I remove objects from my background? Distractions, things like that. How do I draw more attention to my subject? How do I extend my background? What happens if I take a horizontal image and <laughs> all of a sudden I need to add more headroom or I need to add a sky or even add some background to that image? How do I do these things? How do I cut out my subject and put them do on- Do we do them, Aaron? How do we do these How things? How do we do them? We're gonna show you today. We've got the yes. greatest hits coming up. And I'm super excited about the format of today because um, we've kind of broken it down into like the, like, um, more of like the very approachable version of how to do something like removing objects from the background. And then we're gonna show you the advanced version of it too, because as we all know, yeah, sometimes it's like, okay, well, you wanna remove a bird from the sky, you can just clone stamp that out in two seconds. Doesn't take that long, but then it's like, wait, what happens if there's a whole person in the background and <laughs> if there's a lot of busy stuff going on, how do I get rid of that? So. We're starting off with removing things from the background. We're going to go with a, a relatively simple example, and then we're going to go and give a complex example. Amazing. That all sounds so fine and dandy. I'm excited to get into it. Let's get into it now. I'm going to switch to your screen. Let's do Before it. I do that. I do want to shout out the chat because we always got to give some love to them. So I see Fairy in the chat, Marsha, Netco, Steve, Carol, um, some names that I'm probably going to butcher if I try and pronounce. Uh, Stony, Brayla, Sean, Chris. Wow, we got a lot of people joining in. Thank you so much for joining us. Quick reminder, if you are on YouTube, make sure to come on over to behance.net slash live because that is where we're looking at the chat. And that's where we can answer any of your questions that you may have. This is Photoshop's greatest hits. So if you do have any questions, feel free to ask away and I will relay them to Aaron. And as always, please let me know where you're tuning in from. I always love seeing the worldwide audience that comes in and watch the show. So let's hear where you're coming in from. I'm in California right now. And Aaron, where are you tuning in from? I am in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Fancy. Love it. <laughs> yeah, let us know where you guys are from. I'm so excited to have a worldwide audience here. All yeah, right. Yeah, cool. Let's jump what into it. What do you say it. we get into Photoshop here? So 
We've got, uh, starting off, and again, this is kind of our, a little bit more of our simple example here. So let's go ahead and start highlighting some of the things that I want to start removing from the image. And I'm just gonna use my brush tool to do this here. All right, so here we go. And there we are. So we're gonna start off, let's just make my brush a little bit larger here. There we are. Let's go ahead and start off by highlighting everything. So I want to get rid of this person in the background. Let's just say, you know, you took a picture of your friend at the beach and you're like, well, that other chick is in the background too. Distracting. No. Get we her gotta out of get, there. Got to get rid of her. Um, whatever this is here, this big shadowy blob and this thing here, I don't even know what that is, but we got to get rid of that. Um, this area here on the bottom, whatever, maybe that's her shoes or something like that, but well, it's out of focus, so it's probably not her shoes. And then maybe she's like, oh my God, I got this tattoo in Cabo San Lucas and I don't like hummingbirds anymore. So we're going to show you how to get <laughs> rid of that too. So just basically a few different techniques for getting rid of stuff. And then just general image cleanup here. We're going to go through and just like do some cleanup and whatnot here on the actual like uh, park bench or whatever she's sitting on. And that's just going to help like remove distractions. And the awesome. whole goal with removing distractions is just drawing more attention to your subject. Because right now, you know, we look at our subject, but then we look and like, who's that in the background? What are these shadows? Mm -hmm. What is this, all this other stuff? So um, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, so we're- Keep that focal point. It's the name of the game. Yes, yes. Right. Real quick, Aaron, I do wanna shout out where all our friends are tuning in from. Um, we got Indonesia, we got Bulgaria, we got Florida, Germany, Sacramento, Copenhagen. Ooh, somebody else is in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Cool. All right. Let's hang Steve out after New Zealand, this. Uh, Granite City, Illinois, South Florida, China. Somebody says they're in St. Petersburg, but according to their VPN, they're not. <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, wow. Again, worldwide audience. Thanks so much for calling that out. And um, awesome. Let's get rid of all these distractions. Let's get into it. Let's get rid of them. So here's our plan. I'm going to keep this up just so I can kind of look back at this. I find it really helpful to create a plan at the beginning of these edits. That way, if I miss something, I can always just check with my plan. So I the love first how thing you labeled that plan, by the way, plan. I, I looked at his layer one and I looked back and you labeled it plan. Oh, it's plan. All right. <laughs> and I went of attack. I went ahead and made it like red as well. So it stands there out. There nice. we go. So let's go ahead and make that invisible for now. I'm gonna create a new layer. We're gonna start off by removing this subject here. So we're gonna, basically the goal here is to start off with like the easiest techniques and then we're gonna to move to the, a little bit more advanced techniques. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna try, let's go ahead and just grab our lasso tool and I'm gonna just lasso right around this subject, okay? Then we're going to go up to uh, edit, and then we're going to go to content aware fill. Now, content aware fill is super cool because it basically just figures out what should be in that place and does it for you. So let's go to content aware fill. It's some other voodoo magic that I love about Photoshop. It's really pretty oh, yeah. amazing. At the click of a button, you can already see what's going on. on At there. the click of a button. And here you have Crazy. a little preview of what's going on. Um, you can set all kinds of options over here on the right. So you can see, basically you can choose what area it's gonna sample from. So in this case, it's just choosing the ocean. That's what this green is for, okay? So here are your options for that. And then you can see like your sampling area. You can say, choose sample all layers, which I always recommend doing because I want this on a new layer. I always recommend working on new layers. That way, if you need to, you can get back to your original layer at any time. There we go. Smart. And we're gonna, just gonna say output to current layer. That looks great. So let's go ahead and hit okay here. And I'm gonna hit controller command D to deselect and you can see the subject is gone. So you can't really get much easier than that, right? Like boom, they're gone, just selected it and good to go. Now. Sometimes what you're going to see when this sort of thing happens is it, maybe it doesn't line up exactly like how you want, okay? But there's always ways to come in and fix this. So we're going to grab the clone stamp tool and kind of come in here and make this just a little bit better. So it's okay to get like most of the job done with a simple automatic tool like content aware fill and then come in and kind of fix it up. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna label all my layers here. 
There we go. There we go. And we're just going to call this one clone stamp. Sean said, don't forget the shadow. I think we got yes. the shadow, did we? We did oh. not get the shadow. Oh, there it is. Good eye, look, Sean. Look at this shadow right here. We did not get it, but thank you, Sean. Some shadow. I wish I had a, a Sean on my shoulder at all times to be like. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a hovering art director, yeah. it's like a healtho Photoshop director. Yeah, don't forget the don't forget the shadow, or maybe you've had one too many drinks, Aaron. It's time to go home. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or are you sure you want to do this, Aaron? All right, so we're. We're going to go in and grab our clone stamp tool. So we're going to hit S for the clone stamp tool. Now, the nice thing about the clone stamp tool is I'm actually going to get a little preview of whatever I sample. So just to show you this, I'm going to hold Alt or Option on our subjects and click on our subject's phone. And you're going to see, let's make our brush a little bit bigger. You're going to see a little preview of wherever you're actually going to be painting. By the way, if you don't see that preview, here's a pro tip. You can go up to Window and then down to clone source, there we go. And here's a little option to show overlay. Okay, so if that preview doesn't show up for you, just click on this show overlay option within clone source and it'll show up for you. All right, nice. so what, what we wanna do is just kind of make these waves a little more continuous. So I'm gonna hold alt or option to click uh, right here for the area that I want. And then I'm just gonna come in here and fill that in a little bit, okay? So we can see, the um there we go the content aware fill just did most of the job for me and if there's any little areas that like just don't line up exactly like how i want it's not a problem for me to kind of just come in here and clean those up a little bit there we go general kenobi says we all need a rent a sean yeah <laughs> <laughs> business rent a sean yeah come on sean let's go we're going out for the night uh <laughs> So let's go ahead and do that with the shadow as well. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option here and sample and then just kind of paint right over the shadow. So the deal with the clone stamp tool is it basically just creates an exact copy of whatever you see. It doesn't try to do any type of blending. It doesn't try to do any type of, um, you know, like matching from the source. It just creates an exact copy of whatever you see. All right, there we go. Now you're notice I'm gonna go over top of our subject's knee here just a little bit. And I'm gonna explain why in just a second. All right, so whenever we're doing this type of masking where we wanna remove something, it's always a good idea to just first take care of the masking that you actually want to do. And in this case, I wanted to make sure that the background extended nice and naturally to where I needed it to go. And unlike traditional painting, where you would want to stop where the subject's knee is, we can simply use a layer mask to mask out where the subject's knee is. So it doesn't make sense to like, you know, for instance, if we were trying to do, you know, the ocean here, it wouldn't make sense for me to try to like clone stamp it just to the edge of our subject's arm because we wind up with these like harsh lines here. You can see where we've got a much harder transition here and some harsh lines. It actually makes much more sense to do a large soft edge brush and kind of just get it a nice, really nice natural transition. And then don't even worry about the arm. You can just mask that in. So that's what we're going to do right here. I'm going to simply click on my layer mask icon. This is this uh, rectangle here with a circle in it. There we go. Let's go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to use our brush tool and I'm going to paint with black on my layer mask. And this is going to hide everything that I paint uh, in this area, painting with black, it's simply going to hide that layer. So we can see a really nice transition. There we go. We cleaned up. That person is completely gone. Their shadow is gone. The background looks very good now. Everything looks nice and natural, and it is not at all covering up our subject. Most impressive. All right. Yeah, we're what? 14 minutes in, and we're already doing crazy magic. Boom, crazy magic. I love it. So we've got our person gone. All right. The next thing we're going to do, we're just going to grab, uh, we're going to get rid of this little shoe thing or whatever it is down here. And we're going to use the clone stamp for this as well. So S for the clone stamp tool. Okay. Now with your clone stamp, you want to make sure that you are choosing your, uh, you want to make sure you're choosing, there we go, right here where it says sample. 
you want to make sure it says current and below, okay? Current layer and below. That way it's going to allow you to sample anything that's on your layer and anything below it. So in this case, I just have a blank layer. I made a brand new layer. So it's going to sample whatever's on this layer, but it's also going to sample for my background layer. And what this allows me to do is work non-destructively. So notice I didn't even touch my background layer and I'm not going to, I'm going to leave my background layer exactly how it is this entire time, but I'm going to continue to add to it. That way I can just turn these layers off and back on at any time. So on this layer, let's again, grab our clone stamp tool, S for the clone stamp tool, then we're going to hold alt or option, sample the sand because it looks like the sand I want down there and just paint it right off. There we go very quick and easy to do that. Okay, now let's go ahead and move behind our subject. And we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. Let's just call this a uh, clone stamp for CS. And I'm gonna... a shortcut you did for our, our Photoshop newbies. You create a new layer just with the tap of the button. Oh man, I love keyboard shortcuts. All right, to create a new layer with the tap of the button, you're going to hold the shift, option, and command and hit N for new. Or if you're on a PC, it's gonna be shift, alt, control, N. Okay, Boom. you can just do that the all day long. Because our key, it's, it's really a game changer when you just do the same thing over and over and over again. I mean, all those seconds that you're spent clicking around when you can just do it with the top of a button or a couple buttons, it adds up. So yeah, definitely learn shortcuts when you start to get a flow of your workflow and you see yourself using a, a lot of tools all the time. So command, shift, N, right? Uh, sh all three, shift, option, and command. Shift, and. option, and got it. Yeah, you actually can do, um, you can do another variation of that, but it brings up a dialogue. If you just hit control or command N, that's going to bring up a new document. If you hit shift, command N, it brings up a new layer, but then it has this layer dialogue where it asks you what you want to name it and stuff like that. I don't want that dialogue. So if you, you know, hit- You want less clicks. Less clicks. If you hit shift option and command and hit N, it just makes a new layer without a dialog. Awesome. A bunch of ways to do things in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and see about this giant shadow back here. This is one of those things where it's like, okay, maybe content aware Phil is gonna do it, but also maybe not. So we're just gonna give it a test. We're gonna put this tool to the test. So let's go ahead and put a selection right around it. I'm on a new layer here. So if it doesn't work, I can just delete this layer at any time. Okay, we're gonna go to edit down to content aware fill right here. Content aware fill, and it's gonna sample it. And it did an okay job. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. We have a little preview window. It did an okay job. You can see uh, it kind of doesn't really match the sand color exactly, and the tabletop doesn't exactly work there. So let's just go ahead and hit, I'm gonna hit escape and then go to cancel. Let's try a little bit less of a selection. Sometimes if you just like do less, it works a little better. So let's go ahead back here, content aware fill. There we go. And see our little preview here. And we're seeing, okay, it still didn't do that great of a job. And the reason is there's kind of a lot of complex stuff going on. And keep in mind that this is an automatic tool, right? It's trying to figure out what to do here and it might not have enough area to sample from. So that's totally okay. We can just do this manually very easily with the clone stamp tool. So let's simply grab our clone stamp tool and this black blob over here, we know we want it to look like this uh, sand. So we're gonna grab our clone stamp tool. We're gonna hold alt or option to sample the sand. And then we're just gonna paint it in right over here. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, I don't want to keep going because look at this. If I keep going, it's just going to start to paint in that blob again, right? So you don't want to do that. You kind of want to sample. You want to paint a little bit just like this. And then go ahead and let go of your cursor or your brush or whatever. And then just start another one, okay? So I'm going to do some over here. And you'll see what I'm doing by removing that big blob. I'm effectively increasing the sample area that I can use to then remove the rest of the blob. So now I have all that sample area that I can use. And I'm gonna go ahead all the way up the beach here too. Looks like there's another person in the background here. You can kind of very subtly see them. Oh, barely, yeah. Good so eye. We're gonna remove them too. Boom. Where were you, Sean? Where were you on that one? We missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, our guardian angel. There we go. We just need to remove all this stuff here. Cause again, 
you know, we want it to just be uh, a nice clean image. What's this girl's name? All right, first, first person to give us a good name for this girl in the chat wins, and then I'll refer to her as that from here on yes, out. Yes, let's do that. Chat, let us know. What should we name our lovely subject right in front of us? Let us know. Are we doing the first person to do the chat, or do we want to kind of decide once we got a couple options? You know what, Paco? I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let you run that one. Whatever okay, you think cool. would be I'll best. I'll keep an eye on chat. Then I'll just roll with it and refer to uh, her. I see Nedko said Felicia, and I like Felicia. So I like Felicia a lot Felicia. too. All right, Felicia, yeah. you are the Felicia. one and only. Whatever you're browsing on Instagram is extremely important, and we do Very not want. Important anyone uh distracting from that so she's browsing pictures of of new tattoos to replace her hummingbird <laughs> <laughs> maybe How it's to a turn hummingbird into other animal <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe it's a dragon who, who knows maybe it's a four-leaf clover maybe it's a indistinguishable um character from uh, another language i don't know wait 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 said something pretty funny uh, so we, we chose our subject to be Felicia, but then Wade said, that's the one we removed, smiley face. Get it? Because by Felicia, <laughs> she left. <laughs> that's a good one, Wade. Touche, my friend. That was Touché. really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one. That's really good. That's really good. And then he goes, hello, Felicia? Question mark now. <laughs> now Qu this will be hello, question Felicia. Mark, question? Yeah, hello, this is hello, Felicia. That this was is it. hello, Felicia. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually just going to change uh, this to Felicia. Felicia. How do you well, spell Felicia? <laughs> How do you spell Felicia? <laughs> they spelled it F-E-L-I-C-I-A. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Felicia. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Oh, that's a good one. You're a funny guy, Wade. Oh, I am, I am loving this stream so far. Uh, okay, so as you'll notice, basically... I'm getting rid of this stuff in the background and you can see I continue to make new layers as I go through. And the reason that I do that is once I like kind of complete a relatively difficult or like, you know, large area of, a, of an image, I don't necessarily want to like continue working on the same layer because I, I'm happy with that layer. So I'm ready to move on to a new layer and start a new part of that process on a new layer. Now, keep in mind, there are no downsides to creating more layers in Photoshop. It might increase your, fi your file size a little bit, but that's it. There have been times when I've made hundreds of layers in Photoshop. And what I use layers for is basically the ability to go back and undo anything that I've done. So. There is undo and history steps in Photoshop, but it only goes back so far. But check this out. If I want to get back to the original image where we started from, all I have to do is just turn these layers off and I'm exactly back where I'm starting from. And even after I save my Photoshop document, I can come back to this 10 years later and turn these layers off and on and it's going to be fine. This is really great because maybe you do this and maybe your client says like, Oh, actually, uh, Felicia is very important. We want her in that frame. You can just turn that layer back on and be like, hello, Felicia, you're back again. So really, really good workflow to just continue to make layers and layers instead of just relying on undo to get rid of things. There we go. So I'm going to just create a new layer here, and then we're going to go right over here. Now, in this case, we want to actually uh, keep the edge of our picnic table. So I'm going to hold Alt or Alt Option here to sample the edge of our picnic table. And we're just going to continue to paint this in. So notice I'm not trying to create a new edge for the picnic table. I'm not like, I don't need to do anything really fancy here. I already have an existing edge here. All I have to do is just copy that edge from one place over to another. There we go. And if it doesn't line up exactly, that's no big deal. It'll just kind of come in and smooth that out. Nice. All right. And we're going to continue to paint this in here. And I'm going to use the same technique we did before, where I'm going to overpaint a little bit. OK, I don't mind painting over top of my subject just a little bit. That's what layer masks are for. We're going to come back in and mask that out. There we go. We're going to grab the edge of our picnic table and kind of just paint that right in nice look good uh we have dahoonzi in the chat welcome my friend they're asking i just joined the tutorial class will there be a recap 
Well, as a matter of fact, there can be a recap if you want there to be because these streams you can rewind. So feel free to rewind, maybe watch at times two speed to catch up where we are live. And once you feel like you're all caught up, go ahead and join us back live. So it's a cool thing about being a Behance viewer. You can go back in time if you want and then join us back in the moment. In the moment, join us. Now, we talked about keyboard shortcuts in uh, at the beginning of the stream and I use layer masks all the time. I'm constantly making layer masks. They're a great way to hide or show parts of your layer. Uh, but there's no default keyboard shortcut for layer masks. Surprisingly, it doesn't come with Photoshop. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to create your own. It's very helpful. So we're gonna go to edit and then down here to where you see keyboard shortcuts. Uh, hang tight, I think we're blocking that. So let me move us. Okay, cool. Let's there we go. Now. So edit and then down to keyboard shortcuts. Oh. There we go, how we doing? Yep, looking good. All right, cool. So now I'm just gonna find where my layer mask is. So it's, I can go to layer and then I can see it's right here under layer mask. It's grayed out because I've got a dialog open, but that's where it is. So basically I wanna do the same thing in my keyboard shortcuts here. So we're gonna go to layer and then down, we're just gonna scroll down to where we see layer mask. There we go, here it is, layer mask. And then reveal all just creates a white layer mask, okay? So reveal all, and you can see, I just simply typed in what I wanted the keyboard shortcut to be, okay? So you can that's simply- it. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, that's a good point. Um, Wade also called that out when we were talking about shortcuts. Uh, I think the new layer one, that might be the default one, but you can always change that to your own custom shortcuts, which is awesome. It's so nice. Honestly, the short, the keyboard shortcut menus in Photoshop make it such a powerful program. And anytime I get into a program that doesn't have robust keyboard shortcuts or the ability to change them, I don't even want to use that program. I'm like, come on, give me my keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> I need them because it allows you to work so quickly. So um, moving forward, all I have to do is hit these keys. So Option, Shift, Command, M to create a layer mask. And you know, it it's going to save. Let's just hit cancel there. Okay, so let's do the, the timer starting now. Boom, counting. Okay, done. Wow, that was honestly like two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds maybe. Okay, yeah. so let's say I do this 100 times in the edit of an image. So that's 100 times two seconds. What's that, two minutes of my life back? Yeah, you can't get that back. No. It's just gone, doing clicks. Why? Bye, bye Felicia. Bye, bye two Felicia. minutes of my life. Bye two minutes. You know, multiply that over, what, 10 years of editing yeah, images in Photoshop? Adds up. It, adds it adds up. up. It adds up. So now, check it out. Option, Shift, Command, M, layer mask. And Boom. my cursor is in the exact same place that it was when I started. And I can continue this as well. So makes working a lot faster in Photoshop. Yeah, I, I'm just going to fall on that sword over and over again. Shortcuts are your best friend. Especially with Photoshop, I mean, even video editing apps, I do a lot of editing on Premiere and man, you click around a lot, but if you get those shortcuts, you have enough time to go grab a beer afterwards, celebrate, so. <laughs> grab a beer and then, was it uh, Sean who was keeping us in line? Yeah, that was, Sean was the, the rent a Sean who's- The rent a Sean? The pro tips. Yeah, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll stop us when we've had too many beers as well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Man of many talents. Yes, thank you, Sean. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. Now, this is easy here. The reason why this is easy is because there's a lot to sample from, right? Like, we want to get rid of that thing, but look at all this area over here and all this area over here. There are automatic tools in Photoshop that are going to help us get this done. So what we're going to show you now is our next tool, and this is called the Spot Healing Brush Tool. So you want to go ahead and click on the Band-Aid icon over here, and then go to your Spot Healing Brush Tool. Okay? Now up here at the top, you want to make sure in your settings you go to Content Aware. That's very important. And then over here, make sure you go to Sample All Layers. Okay, that way- Now what does that option do? Why do we want to make sure Sample All Layers is checked? That allows me to do this on a new layer. Okay, so remember how earlier we talked about how I wanna leave my background exactly how it is? If I don't have sample all layers checked, it's not gonna do anything because there's nothing on the layer that I'm on. I'm on a brand new layer, right? So if I hit sample all layers, now I can just simply paint over this object 
it's going to have so much area to sample from. Look, it has all this area over here, all this area for, over here, and it simply got rid of that incredibly quickly. So quick. So quick and easy. So this is a fantastic tool when you see, okay, so for something like this little uh, screw head that's sticking out, right? It's got sample area over here. It's got sample area here. It's got all of this information around it. So if I paint over that, it's got so much information around it, it's gonna do a great job quickly and easily getting rid of that screw head. Okay, awesome. now in this case, it did a really good job, but if it ever doesn't do the exact job you need, you still have the clone stamp tool or you have the regular healing brush tool. We'll show you that in just a second. We, are, we got a surprise in the chat. We got a friend in the chat. We got Toby Shinobi. He said, oh, what's up, bro? Oh, Toby. I miss you. Toby and yep. I, oh, man, go way back. We live in Chicago yeah, we, together. We've had him on the show before. I think he was even on a Mac session with us. So welcome, Toby. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we also have some other friends joining. We got Space Kitten. Awesome name. We got Peter. We got Frank. Wesley. Nice. Thank you all for joining us. Again, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask the one and only Aaron Ace. We got him for about another hour and a half. So ask away and I will relay when appropriate. Ask away. I can't wait to hear your questions. And if you have uh, <laughs> anything funny, please chime yes. in. We are not uh, comedy. Let us know. Yeah, we're having fun today. This is a fun stream. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this little hummingbird. It is super cute, but we did cute. say we're going to get rid of it. So um, we are just going to try our spot healing brush tool because this is a very automatic tool. Let's see how it does. So I'm going to just start painting over our hummingbird. There we go. And a tip that I have is try doing part of the hummingbird first and then kind of come back in here, try to do another part of it. There we go. And you're going to see, like, I'm not even holding any buttons here. I'm literally just painting over this on a new layer and Photoshop just does the rest. It's pretty amazing. Look at that. It even figured that out. It didn't do a great job there, but that's okay. Just paint over it again. And look at that. The second time it did a great job. Okay. So quick. No need to hit undo. No need to hit erase. No need to, you know, uh, put more work on yourself. Just paint that again and you're, you're done. You're good to go. We do have a, we do have a question, Aaron. It's a little off topic, but I'm going to answer it or I'm going to ask it anyway. Yeah. I want you to say the first thing that comes to your mind without thinking it for too long. All right. Lucas says best pizza in Chicago. Go. Oh my God. Okay. Demos. First of all. Okay. If you're going deep dish, then I would say Lou Malnati's is my personal favorite, but just like straight up best pizza place in Chicago. Demos on Damon. Demos. Okay, cool. Lucas said that there is a right answer. So I'm curious to know what you think, Lucas. Is that the best pizza? Cause you already heard Aaron's answer. I mean, cool. deep dish right. is a big thing in Chicago, but here's the thing. If you live in Chicago, you don't eat deep dish all the time because it's like a crazy it's thing. Heavy. It, <laughs> you can only it's eat one heavy. piece and then you got to take a nap, yeah. <laughs> you know? So I, for the average... I remember, yeah, I remember the first time I ordered a deep dish pizza, there was four slices and I'm like, come on, man, four? And then you eat one and you're like, oh, oh my goodness, I think you, I think you guys are on the same wavelength. Lucas says, Demos, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So... You know, that's how you know Chicago or Aaron is a true Chicago local. That's what's up, man. I mean, in a, a pizza place, in my opinion, should be you can sit down and share a pie with friends. Or if you're on a bike ride, you can grab a slice and go. Plus, Demos has got great options for vegan. So you like it's not exclusive. You can bring all your friends nice, there. A bit of everything centralized location and uh friends with the owner and he's super cool and like treats all of his employees really well he lets them like choose their own music at work he lets them be individuals and i appreciate that as a person you know who like runs an establishment like right treat your people good it's going to come back to you so demos all the way demos cool all right what is the next thing we got going on for we're us? just going to remove this little like dark area if you can see it like right in between uh the legs and the picnic table and then we're okay. donezo we're donezo mcdonzerton donezo. so again i'm painting more than i need to here because i've got my friend the layer mask right so more than i need to i'm not worried at all about painting over my subject's legs that keyboard shortcut from earlier shift option command m for my layer mask and then i just start painting in here keep in mind i created that layer mask 
uh, keyboard shortcut. So that one is not going to be visible for you by default, but you can always make it if you want to. There we go. And then we just paint away the area we don't want and we're done. Let's go ahead and turn on our plan again, just to make sure we did everything. Got rid of this person, that stuff back there, all these little distractions, the shoes, the hummingbird, and we're good. So that plan just kind of helps me like check, you know, like, okay, did I do what I said I was going to do? So let's go ahead and check out our before and after. We're just going to pop it in here. I'm going to hold yes. alt or option and take a look at this eyeball here. So here's our before and here's the after. We can see like big difference in the photo, right? I didn't edit oh, yeah. the exposure. I didn't edit, you know, I didn't do any type of retouching here. I just simply got rid of the stuff that was distracting. And now Felicia number two is the only person we've got our eyes on. By Felicia is gone. <laughs> Everyone in this photo is named Felicia, by the way. Yeah. And we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this out. That's there awesome. We... That was some Adobe Cadaver magic. So. <laughs> very, now, very cool. This is uh, this is the example that I chose as the uh, easy example. So now let's go ahead. We're just going to close that down real quick. We're going to go ahead and go to the harder example. Ooh, all right. We're leveling up. We're all leveling right. up. That was, that was the intro to Photoshop 101. Yes. Now we're okay. getting to bachelor's level. That... <laughs> so in this case, I want to remove both of these people from the background of this image. I want them gone completely. I just want to look at this subject. Now, the reason why this is a little bit harder is because I don't have like a giant sandy beach to sample from in this case, right? I I don't near I don't have as much information to go upon. So what I'm going to wind up doing is actually creating a lot of this stuff from scratch, and it's an exciting opportunity to learn that although tools like the Spot Healing Brush and the Clone Stamp tool are very powerful and fantastic, it's always a good lesson to know that you can fall back on simple tools like the brush tool to do a lot of this stuff. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. It's really cool. Let's see it. All right, so we're gonna start off with a subject in the background. So I do have a bit of a texture here in the background. So I wanna start off with the clone stamp tool. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna start by clone stamping this out. So we're gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool and then Alt or Option to sample right up there. Okay, we're gonna go right down here and then Boom, we're just starting off. Okay, nothing we haven't done before. Yep. Pretty easy. There we go. Pretty easy so far. Everybody following along? There we go. We're able to do that. Now you can see from the left and the right, that's not perfect. So I yeah. got a sample here and then paint this in right over here. There we go. To make sure that lines up how we want it to. So we're paying a little more detail into the clone stamp tool. Instead of just blindly picking away at the last photo, we're actually trying to make it match to make it more realistic. Exactly, exactly. All right, so that's starting to look pretty good there. We're gonna do that one more time. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. There we go. And we're gonna continue on with the same plan here. So this is the easier subject to remove. So we're starting with the easier stuff today and moving towards the harder. All right, there we go. And that's looking pretty good. Now what's this texture here? I don't really know what this texture is. And you can see this little gray area here to the right of the subject. I don't actually have that much of space to, to sample this, right? Like if I wanted to sample this and start painting it over, I just don't have that much space but I want this to continue over. So what we're gonna do is just simply grab our brush tool. So we're gonna hit B for the brush tool. I'm gonna to make a large soft edge brush and I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and select this color. Now you can select any color, just hold Alt or Option and select any color in your image and then just start painting with it if you want, okay? So we're gonna use a large soft edge brush. I'm gonna sample this color and then I'm gonna hold Shift and just simply paint to the left and the right. Nice. Okay, now I'm gonna sample this color that's a little bit lighter and we're going to start painting in here. So keep in mind, I want everyone to keep in mind that this is just the brush tool. This is not a fancy, you know, automatic type of selection tool. This is literally just the brush tool. Okay. We're going to make our brush a little bit larger. I'm going to go into my window and then down to our brush settings. Okay. 
And I'm going to turn on my shape dynamics and I'm going to break, raise the minimum diameter just a little bit. Okay. That's going to help me make a brush. that's a little bit more round and it's going to, it's a little bit more soft rather. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to create something that looks actually like it's out of focus. There we go. And I'm going to kind of paint in some variation here as well. There we go. Painting in the rest of that desk, painting in that light area there. Uh, we do have a question, Aaron. Marsha is asking, is Aaron using a tablet or a mouse? I'm using a tablet. So I'm using a Wacom Intuos tablet here. Um, let me just lift it up. This is the Intuos yeah, Pro. It's a little bit bigger. Here we go. There you go. Check that this little is, guy out. Nice. Yeah, this is such a nice little tablet. It's Bluetooth enabled. They're on $200. Uh, it's a bit of an investment, but honestly, if you're uh, enthusiastic and serious about Photoshop, I highly recommend getting one of these because it really opens up the door into things like painting like we're doing right now. So nice. uh, yeah, there are also less expensive versions out there uh, as well, which totally work fine. I, I think this one is, uh, this is my tool of choice when it comes to this sort of thing, but uh, obviously there are uh, solutions at many different price points friendly to different budgets. There we go. So you can see I'm still painting over and I'm not necessarily concerned here about, there we go, about painting over top of the subject on the right. You know, I'm just kind of painting this in and using, just kind of using the old fashioned eyedropper tool to sample color and then paint this in. Yes, Shri has a good question. Yeah. How are you magnifying the cursor without panning and zooming? I think that's oh, a Mac shortcut, right? How am I, how am I doing this with the red yeah. outline? Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, this is a an app called Pro Mouse. Uh, it's a it's available in the App Store for the Mac, and there's a PC version for this too, as well. Uh, not the same exact app, but I use this mostly for tutorial instruction to zoom in right. on things that so I can yeah. show you guys. Very helpful on this live stream. So thanks for having that. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's really nice. I I think it's you got to pay for it, unfortunately, but um, it's, uh, it, it's really nice, especially if you're trying to show other people what you're doing, uh, it works out well. Okay. So there we go. That person is gone and I'm pretty happy with that result. Let's go ahead and zoom out. I think it looks good here. Obviously you could continue to spend all day on that if you wanted to, but you can see this bottom part we did basically all that was with the brush tool. Pretty amazing. Now, uh, let's go ahead and make that subject visible and invisible. Let's go ahead and move on to our next subject. And then I'm going to show you guys some really cool tools that you can use. Okay. So for the next subject, we're just going to use our brush tool. Basically, we're going to try to use the brush tool for pretty much this entire subject. All right. So let's hit B for the brush tool. We're going to sample this color over here. Okay. Nice large brush. There we go. And we're just going to kind of paint and keep in mind, just like we did in our last stream, I'm not worried about painting over my subject on the left. That's uh, something that I can come back at any time and just throw a layer mask on there. Okay. So this is not at all my, uh, I'm not thinking about stopping where she is. I want to, I, I actually want to continue to paint completely over subject yeah i think i think that's a very helpful tip um, especially for people that might be starting off with photoshop they might try and get that perfect brush line to not bleed into our focal point with the girl but as you'll see uh, aaron will show you how to bring it back in a pretty pretty easy way so you don't have to worry about this brushing process like he's doing right now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and create a new layer and then i'm going to choose this color here right that's going to be a little shadow that we're going to just paint in here for the chalkboard. Okay. So we're like literally just painting in a shadow and then nice. grabbing the color here from the chalkboard. We're going to go ahead and paint in. So we get our chalkboard. There we go. And then I'm going to grab the color of these little notes and we're going to start painting these in too. So we got to put some good. detail. We got to put some details back there. It's not going to look like it's a real thing, right? 
So what I'm doing now is kind of like the blocking stage. I'm just trying to get rid of that subject and then I can go in and throw some details in, in just a minute. Now, if you want to make something straight up or down, all you have to do is hold the shift key and you'll go straight up and down. So I'm going to use this here to create this piece of paper. All right, so I'm holding shift and now I'm going just left and right and see how that allowed me to create this nice right angle there. Again, it's this really is- really creating paper with a brush. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... There we go. And let me just sample this color here and give it a little bit of a hard edge there. There we go. You have someone in the chat asking if you can explain your brush setting, the opacity flow and smoothing, I assume for this brush. Yes, definitely. Um, so I generally keep my um, my opacity, I generally have it 100%. And I use flow to determine how much, uh, how much I'm actually going to be painting, how much uh, quote unquote ink uh, comes out of the brush itself. So uh, in just one second, I'll go ahead and show you guys the difference between opacity and flow because it's a huge huge help to know the difference between the two and it really changes the way um, that you can use the brush tool and, and the versatility of the tool as a whole i like right. that analogy with um i think it was the flow of how much paint quote unquote comes out of the brush it's a good way to yes. look at it yes all right, so this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Obviously, we got some cleanup, but we're, uh, you know, when you think about it, like we just made this stuff, like we, we just made these little uh, pieces of paper back there in the background. Okay, so this is what I would call like step one. Uh, this is our like blocking phase, right? Not exactly there yet, but pretty good. Okay, so let's just show you the before and after that. Now, look, I'll go ahead and answer uh, your question about opacity versus flow, because this is a big one. And I think um, it's kind of a game changer. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you guys here. I'm just gonna choose a big uh, red brush here. So if I just have my opacity and my flow at 100%, this is what it looks like, okay? It's just, a, you know, red. <laughs> we all know what that is. So I'm gonna bring my opacity down to 50%. And basically this allows me to paint with 50% visibility. But you can see if I go over a place over and over and over, I'm just like painting over the same place. It's not actually adding more paint. I actually have to lift up my brush or my cursor or my trackpad or my mouse and then paint again. But then look at this when it tries to blend, it just mm. pops another 50% on it, right? And then if I try to do it again, it just pops another 50% on that. So this is not really that, it doesn't blend that well. And it's not actually representative of how like real life works, right? Like if you had a marker and you drew a line on a piece of paper and then you went over it over and over and over again, it would get darker and darker and darker, right? It wouldn't just like stay the exact same opacity. So that's what flow does so let's go ahead now we're going to bring our opacity to 100 percent, and i'm going to bring my flow down to like 10 percent. so flow allows me to paint just a little bit right i'm just painting just a little bit but if i decide to go over a area a couple different times look it's going to get darker and darker and darker and you can see how i'm able to create a very nice beautiful gradient that kind of blends in. I haven't lifted the brush up yet, by the way. This is all just one brush stroke that I'm using to blend in and make darker and darker and darker and make my gradient. There we go. Nice. Look at how nice and natural that looks compared to our previous example. So that's basically the difference between opacity and flow. So I primarily just use flow and that allows me to kind of do a build up effect. Like here, I'm gonna put this shadow here, right? So I'm gonna just hold Alt or Option, nice large brush, paint in the shadow from that cabinet there, right? We needed a shadow. I just did the base color to start with, but we need that shadow, see, before and after the shadow to look realistic. There we go. Now we're gonna do another shadow and I want this one to be back there behind our piece of paper. 
Nice. Very good explanation, by the way, on opacity and flow. And Marsha, the person that asked the question, agrees, saying, great explanation. All right. Thank you, Marsha. Yeah, it's such a really helpful um, tool to know, like, you know, when, when to use them. But I, I just got to say, in general, I pretty much almost always leave my opacity at 100%. That's just right. like my general go-to. There we go. So if you guys are following along, keep in mind that like pretty much all of this is done with just the brush tool. Like yeah, it's looking good. And for those of you that are that just joining us, um, we are doing the greatest hits of Photoshop with Aaron Ace, talking about some cool things to do and how to remove things in the background that take away from our focal point. We just edited a photo before this that was sort of the simpler version to do. And now we're doing a little bit more advanced techniques that deal with more complicated distractions. And that's where we're at right now. Yes. So check it out. I just did a couple different layers to remove that subject, but I can actually group all those layers together by hitting Control or Command G to group them together. And then I can just create a layer mask on the group. That way I don't have to keep track of which, uh, which layer I used where I painted over this subject. I'll, I'll, you know, I can actually just come in and group all of those layers together and then just go ahead and bring my layer mask in and make sure that it only goes up to the edge of my subject and doesn't cover up my subject at all. So that dude is like almost all gone. I mean, I he's a nice guy. <laughs> I like him, he's he's great. But let's just say your client's like, can we have one with just the, just the foreground person? You can say, Psh, no problem. I watched no Adobe problem. Live. Dude, I watched I, Aaron Nace and now I know how to do that. I know how to do that. No big deal. We're good. Uh, cool. There's a little bit of peeking out from here. So again, we're just going to use the brush tool. I'm going to just sample from here. There we go. Just paint in here again. Keep in mind, I'm going larger than what I actually need. I just want to make sure I've got full coverage. I don't want I don't want any area peeking out there. And then we just pop in our layer mask. There we go, slightly smaller brush, slightly harder brush. Let me just paint this in. So you can use the X key on your keyboard to switch between your foreground and your background color. And when you're on a layer mask, that's gonna be black and white, which controls visibility. So if you want something invisible, just paint with black. If you want it visible again, just paint with white. What's that saying? It's white reveals, black conceals. The that's it. Is the other one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. it. Cool comment from the chat. Christina saying, I learned most of what I know on Photoshop from Flurn. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us today. And all right. Awesome to have you guys in the chat. It's super, super cool to be able to connect with everyone one on one. And like, you know, we get to do this together. So if you guys have anything you see that I missed or anything you want me to explain better or redo, um, let me know. I'm happy to yeah. do it. Now's the time to do it. It's Now a two-way street. Time. You can interact with Aaron Nace for the next hour. Whoa. Uh, Very asks, what is the shortcut to add a mask? Oh, um, so I actually made one myself and I showed uh, earlier in this stream. So. Um, Basically, you can go to uh, edit and then down to your keyboard shortcuts here, and you can make your own keyboard shortcuts. So um, if you want to rewind earlier to the stream, I actually showed how to do it um, on, right, on That was the stream. custom shortcut you did, right? Yep, that's right. Nice. That's right. Yeah. Cool. All right. So there we go, kind of just painting this in and getting getting this area. And obviously you can just continue to paint in whatever uh, background you think you uh, should do. There we go. I'm just going to kind of paint this in. And then we're just going to start clone stamping in here and get a couple more of these little file folders here. Cool. And while you do that, I'll make you think a little bit. Toby's asking, what tool would you like to see added to Photoshop? Oh, that is a good question. What tool would I like added to Photoshop? Yeah, something that maybe doesn't exist yet, but maybe could. Hmm. I 
That is a good question. Yeah, Steve's got an answer. He says, Illustrator's touch type tool. Not familiar with Illustrator too much. So I'm not sure what that does, but it seems pretty cool. Yeah, same here. I'm actually not too familiar with Illustrator myself, but um, that does sound really cool. Touch type tool. Let's go ahead Your and- questions are coming in. We opened it. We opened the floodgates. Uh-oh. Let's bring there them on. Go. What do we got? Cool. Uh, I may not be pronouncing this, so apologize in advance. Uh, Ajinkya ask, hello, Aaron. Oh, this is just a comment, but I'll read it anyway. Hello, Aaron. Thank you for everything. Following you from six years now. Also learned a lot from you. Thank you and team heart emoji. Thank you. Oh, Thanks, thank you. Cool. And then Parmeet is asking, the color on the left side of the notice board and the right seems to be different. How do you suggest mm. making that transition smoother? Yeah, we can definitely I think some work Some of it that. was for the shadow, right? Didn't we purposely add a shadow? Yeah, that yeah. So it kind of, if we just make, this is back to our original photo again. So it kind of was different uh, to start with. So I was just kind of like working on that. But what you can do is you can hit B for the brush tool and then sample this color here. And then check this out. I can just simply paint with a large brush. Okay, check this out. Large soft edge brush, very sloppy, right? But because this color here, this white color here and the white color of our paper and the white color of the cabinet, those are all lighter than this color that I just painted in here, right? So if I simply change my blending mode from normal down to lighten, Ooh. it automatically did that. And it's not gonna mess with any of my stuff because it's not gonna make my paper lighter because the color itself is actually darker. So I can just simply go in there. You can see, let's just go back to a normal layer. I didn't try to do a nice fancy job at that at all. I'm relying on my blending mode to make that a little bit lighter and basically do the job for me. Nice, great use of blend modes. Hey, and I'm pretty happy with this. What do you guys think? So let's just show you the before and after. If you guys got any critiques or anything that you think I could do better, I'm happy to hear it. But here's our before subjects in the background and our after. And nice. keep in mind, all this stuff back here, we just painted with the brush tool. I, I used a little bit of clone stamp tool in the beginning of this, but pretty much everything else was with the brush tool. Yeah, very cool. I think it came out great. Super, super cool. All that right. And one tool pretty much, right? The brush tool? Yeah, yeah. Clone stamp tool a little bit on the left, but pretty much mostly with the brush tool. Nice. Parmeet agrees. They said, right. love this. If, if Parmeet's in, we're good. We're good. We got the stamp of approval. Yeah, the clone stamp of approval. Let's go back to our uh, next example here. I want to show you guys how to extend your background. So let's go ahead. We're going to start off again with a simple uh, example, and then we're going to move to complex examples. So here's our simple example. The reason why this is simple is because we have a, a relatively simple background, right? We just have white here and kind of tan on the left-hand side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try a content-aware crop. All right. Uh, let me get us out of the way, hold on a sec. Okay, cool, there we go. All right, cool. So we're gonna hit C for our crop tool. So what? what go ahead to your crop tool, you can hit C. Now up at the very top here, you are uh, got an option here that says content aware. So let's go ahead and click that content aware option on. And what this is gonna do is if I extend my background a little bit, okay, it's gonna use the same tools that it used for content aware fill that we did on the beach earlier and try to fill this in. So let's go ahead and hit that checkbox and see what it does. So it increased the room on the left and use content aware to give me that space. Isn't that incredible? Beautiful. This is actually, this is, this is pretty cool. Uh, I make the thumbnails for Adobe live and there are times where we have this wide, this wide picture frame that headshots need to go to, but when they're portrait style, I don't have the edges to extend it. And I've actually used content aware fill quite a few times just to extend those edges. So that headshot fits on a landscape picture frame. So very cool, very cool tool right there. Yeah, incredible. Now here you can see it didn't do exactly what I wanted. It made this a little bit darker, but that's not a big deal. What I can do is grab a curves adjustment layer and make it a little bit lighter, okay? But I only want that to be visible over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my marquee tool. There we go. 
And then basically I'm gonna invert that on my layer mask and then deselect and then invert again. So it's just gonna be lighter on the right-hand side where it didn't do a perfect job. Now on the layer mask itself, I'm just gonna give this layer mask a blur. So we're gonna to go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur to make sure that it's you know nice and transitionless. There we go. And now you can see, I just made it a little bit too light. So we can just double click right here and I can just make it a little bit darker to kind of fit in. And if I need to, I can hit Control or Command T on the layer mask and kind of stretch that out so it just kind of blends a little bit better nice looking good uh real quick we can see at the bottom right of the screen that artist spotlight countdown has come on so in about 30 minutes we're going to be spotlighting one of you creatives from the community and we'll take about 10 minutes to do that so that's in about 30 minutes also sean has been pestering us about this but we will ask uh why hasn't paco asked aaron about the banana oh okay i see what you mean do you know about the banana trick no. Oh, Aaron doesn't know about the banana trick. This is a first. I'm like um, scared little, right now. <laughs> I love how you just looked behind you. <laughs> like there's some crazy banana behind you for some reason. Um, this is this is this is cool. This is where I'm gonna rely on you, community. Maybe even you, Sean. Um, there's an Easter egg where you can make a banana appear as one of those tools. I know that's like Jesus Ramirez's uh, go-to little trick. So someone's going to have to tell us how to bring up the banana because I certainly don't know and neither does Aaron. So if somebody knows in the chat, let us know and we'll make that little banana appear. I have no idea. I'm going to just take a short bathroom break, if you don't mind, and then we're going to come back and show you a more difficult example yeah, on extending it. our background. Cool. So we're going to take a super quick break, but don't go anywhere. Maybe in the meantime, you can let us know how to do the banana trick. Yeah, what's we'll with this banana right trick? All right. See you in a sec. And one. All right, everybody, we are now back. And lucky for us, great timing. They gave me the opportunity to figure out how to do the banana trick. So I'm going to walk you through this. Are you ready, Aaron? Let's do it. All right. So I believe you have to choose to edit your toolbar. So whatever that means. Maybe there's a preference where you can edit the toolbar. All right. Edit toolbar. Okay. And hold down the shift key while clicking the done button. So I guess go to done and then hold shift when you click done. Hold shift and hit done. Ah, there it is. Check it out. You now have a banana on your toolbar. What? Boom. Pretty cool, huh? But it's gone now. I just clicked on it and it's gone now again. Oh, there, it's there it is. <laughs> what? That's really cool. This you is guys a... just taught, you taught the Photoshop master something new. That's, That's just an Easter egg. That doesn't it's just even... a little Easter egg, I believe. And I think it could maybe turn into a toast as well if you do something else. But what? Uh, we'll let the chat chime in. We'll just click on shift and hit done again. No, it's still banana. Dude. Oh, you might be stuck with it. Now I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> I, I, I like it there. I'm, I'm into it. Now, every tutorial I make from moving forward, people will be like, what's the banana tool? What's the banana? We're now part of the banana club. So banana welcome. club, banana, bananas in pajamas. General Let's do this thing. Says, That's bananas. Oh my God. I love That's that. Funny. I had no okay. idea. 
uh, whoever Photoshop developer put that in, just do more of that. Do way more yeah. of that stuff. I love it. Oh my gosh, I can't uh, believe never heard of that. This is cool. It's it's called Welcome to the ABCs, according to Sean. It's the Adobe Banana Crew. <gasps> yes. Bravo, Sean. Thank you for letting us into the ABC. We are now Thank official you. members. Oh, I love it. I love it. Ooh, this is so much fun. Let's go ahead and remove. I like really want this banana to be a tool. Like I want to, I want to click on it. And I just want it to like fill my screen with bananas. The next uh, client you get, they're like, please use the banana tool to remove objects. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love it. All right. So we're going to show you another example on extending our background. So in this case, we're going to hit C for the crop tool. We're not going to use content aware. We're just going to kind of extend the background up a little bit there and hit enter. Now what I want to do is I want to create a solid color fill background and I actually want to choose this color. So we're just going to go to solid color fill. There we go. And then you can just choose whatever color you want because I'm going to put it behind our subject. Now the thing with the solid color fill this is so nice is if I change my crop, check this out. If I change my crop, boop and hit enter, it automatically fills with that color. So once you have this set up the way that you want, you can make your background as large as you want. There's no limitations. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is change this red to the blue of the background. So let's just double click here. Okay, and then we're going to click here, the eyedropper tool right here on the background color. Right there looks good. Let's hit okay. So the next thing that I want to do is uh, integrate these two a little bit better, right? Because, uh, you know, we can obviously see the edge. So I've got this layer. I want to go ahead and put a layer mask on it. So I'm, in this case, I'll just click on my layer mask icon here. We're going to hit B for the brush tool and then paint black with my brush tool. And I'm just going to paint away right here on this edge. So you're going to see, let me just zoom out here. Mm, we're, gonna, we're, doing. we're just going to use, cool. yeah, it's such a nice, uh, such a nice, way to extend your background. So I'm just using a super large soft edge brush to kind of fade this out here, okay? There we go. We're just fading that out. There we go. So it looks nice and natural. Okay, there we go. And let's go ahead and make sure we paint it all the way. So on the right hand side, doesn't that look like a nice even fade? Looks pretty good, yeah. right? Can't even really really tell what's uh that we did anything now on the left hand side we're going to do the same so let's go ahead and fade that out there there we go i'm going to make this a little bit lighter here on the left hand side too so what we're going to do is i'm going to grab our adjustment layers right down here we're just going to grab our adjustment layers and i'm going to go down to let's go ahead and so you guys can see it you can use curves or levels let's go ahead and grab curves okay now I want to show you guys about clipping masks because these are incredibly powerful. Basically, if I just grab a curves adjustment layer, it's going to make my whole image either lighter or darker, right? But if I use this icon right down here, looks like a square with a little arrow to it, that adds a clipping mask. And what a clipping mask does, it will only affect the layer that's directly underneath it. So let's go ahead and click on this icon. You can see it's now uh, highlighted and the layer itself has been pushed over to the right. And we have this little down arrow here. Okay. So you can see, you can also hit option command G is the keyboard shortcut for clipping mask. So if you see right here, this is just going to go regular layer, clipping mask, regular layer, clipping mask. By the way, you can also right click if you ever forget and go down to create or release clipping mask. Nice. Clipping masks are incredibly helpful because now it allows me the ability to only affect this layer, okay? So I can just affect the layer that I'm on. There we go. It's just gonna get a little bit lighter here. And now I'm gonna invert the layer mask on this and just paint white on my layer here. And that's just gonna make the shadow area a little bit lighter. And that's gonna help me out when it comes to my layer mask. Awesome. Um, and we have our very own Jesus Ramirez in the chat. Jesus, we were just talking about you. Thanks for joining us. Dude. We did not know, believe it or not, how to do the banana. I had to look it up while we had a break. Um, and now, as you can see, of course, we are part of the ABC Club. So I'm glad to be a part of it now with Aaron. So good stuff. Dude, Jesus. Good to see you, man. How you been? 
Oh, yeah, everybody say what up to Jesus. It's always great having him in the chat. He does awesome streams with us. Uh, great person to be part of the Adobe Live family. So. Oh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, Jesus. Thanks for joining, man. I miss you. Come visit me in Mexico. Yes. All right. Let's go ahead and continue to paint out the edge of this shadow just a little bit. There we go. I want to make sure we have all the nice shadow detail in there. And I'm going to change this layer from normal down to darken. So I don't want it to lighten anything. Cause this is, I'm using this as like the very soft edges of the shadow here. Nice, looking good. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna just go in here and clean up my layer mask just a little bit. That banana is tripping me out. Every time I look over there, <laughs> it's the only time I, it's the only thing I see. My brain is like- a vision now. Yeah. My brain's like, does not recognize banana. <laughs> Foreign tool, do not know it. <laughs> Foreign, ex exterminate, <laughs> freak out and destroy. We have a couple, Every... couple people commenting on the on the Mexico comment you made. Christine's like, Mexico? And Jesus is like, what, Mexico? Hablas Espanol? Uh, un poquito, sí. <laughs> Estoy aprendiendo. Yeah. So, Jesus says, we should go, Paco. Yes. Once we're allowed to travel or it is safe to do so, I might just take you up on that. Yes, please. Por favor. Vámonos a México a visitar Erin. Vámonos. Um, yeah, for those of you guys who don't know, I actually just recently moved yeah, to Mexico. I live a here now. recent move on Erin's part. Went from Chicago to Mexico. Yeah. I live in the dream in Puerto Vallarta. That's right. I've been here for a few weeks now and uh, I'm from Hawaii originally little oh, really? fun trivia fact there if anyone didn't know that uh um, did not know that yeah so it feels like home here that's uh that's awesome good for yeah, you. yeah yeah really I'm, happy to be I'm, here i'm also from mexico i was born there so i have dual citizenship mexican and american o sea, hablo espanol también soy mexicano yeah you speak much better than i do i'm i'm learning on a daily basis <laughs> <laughs> well, according to my family down in mexico i now have the english accent oh like, okay oh, you, and I was like, no, but it's all good. I still understand <laughs> it perfectly. Oh man, too good, too good. So we've cut out good our stuff. We did a really rough like layer mask with our subject, but check this out. I have this solid color fill background here that now I'm able to use in a really cool way because this is what's left of my original subject. Okay, not much. Let me just make sure to paint the backpack back we want that to be 100 percent visible but this is all that's left of my original image but because i have this solid color fill background that i've chosen to match this check this out now the coolest thing ever is available to us because a solid fill background will expand infinitely to fill space so if i hit c for my crop tool i can just crop this over to the right let's say you need a horizontal banner look at that we have a perfect wow. horizontal banner with our subject. Okay, let's say we want to crop this up. C for the crop tool, pop that up. Boom. Boom. <laughs> so that's that's very cool. Good you want to, yeah, you want to do like a, you know, your client asks you for a vertical banner that says like, you know, was she holding some books since she's a student maybe? So it's like, you know, class is 40% off. We need a vertical banner. And then they come back to you and they're like, oh, you know what? We need a horizontal banner with our subject on the right hand side, crop boom. tool that and boom, it's done. Class is 40% off over here, whatever you want. And uh, it, it can extend infinitely. Obviously in this case, we're doing this with a uh, blue background, but it could be any color background as well. And it's completely seamless because we actually took the background color from the original photo, right. did a little bit of shadow work on there, but it's a fantastic method for extending your yeah, background. Super cool. Oh, great, great tip. This truly is Photoshop's greatest hits. Good stuff. Uh, I General am Kenobi it. has a, <laughs> he's got a funny comment. He goes, next he'll change his name to Aron with the apostrophe. <laughs> I've been Over, saying that. Oh, Aron. <laughs> that's pretty much how I introduce myself here. Yeah. So <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Your, your last name would be pronounced then Nase. Nase, yes. Aron Nase. Aron Nase. Um, <laughs> it's so much fun. I feel like my brain is expanding every day because 
Um, a lot of my friends here do speak English, but a lot of the people I interact with don't speak English. So I'm, um, right. it's you know really kind of pushing my knowledge every day, and it, it's a fun thing to be. I'm 37 years old, and it's a fun thing at this age to be like I know nothing. You know, like I I don't know. I'm not very well immersed in the culture here. I you know had to figure out how to get an apartment and utilities and internet and all that. It's cool to like. Almost have to start fresh because I feel like my brain is like. <laughs> yeah, it's been and a great. I would argue it's. I mean, you know, obviously the quickest way to learn a language is by having the luxury of being a kid and learning it because you're just your brain's a sponge. It's really easy to pick it up. But now that we're older, I would say immersion is also really, really great in learning a language. Right? It's one thing to study it off of books here, in the United States where you speak English, but it's another thing to actually go to Mexico or any Spanish-speaking country. And just be surrounded by it the street signs the everyday dialogue the video the audio I'd, i'd say it's probably a little a little faster and easier to pick up a second language when you're just fully immersed yeah yeah and i don't get a day off you know it's not like i right. can be lazy yeah. about it because like as soon as i step out of my door it's like oh i have to practice <laughs> it's fantastic all right cool what's next on the agenda what do we got So this is our next image where we're going to be extending our background up, and it's getting a little bit harder. So we talked about how earlier we wanted to go from like our simple examples and start to get a little bit more difficult. And this is a great example of that because we've got some mountains in the background, we've got some bushes here, we've got some tree here. There's a lot of stuff that we kind of need to fill in that I simply don't have. I don't know what the top of this tree looks like. I don't know what the rest of the mountain range looks like. And could you paint this with the brush tool? Yes, but there's a lot of detail in there and maybe the brush tool isn't going to be that easy in this case, right? When it was just a clean white background, that wasn't the hardest thing ever, but painting in a tree might be a little bit harder. So what we're going to do um and uh Paco, how long do we have until our artist spotlight? Great question. We have about a little over 12 minutes for the artist spotlight. So then we'll go do that for about 5 to 10 minutes and then we'll probably have about 15 more minutes of Photoshop magic before we got to wrap. That's great. That's great. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pop into Adobe Stock here. We're just going to take a look at Adobe Stock and I'm just going to type in garden, okay? Now, this is just a great example. A lot of people think of compositing and they think of, you know, like fantasy stuff and highly conceptual artwork and I love that sort of thing, but you know, uh picking images from a garden and compositing those together is also a version of compositing and sometimes that's exactly what uh what we want to do and sometimes that's the best uh thing for our image. So What I'm doing is just kind of scrolling through some images of a garden here and I'm looking for trees that I could then use to be my out of focus area. And I think actually here at the top, I think this is going to totally work. I scrolled by it to try to find a better example, but I think this image is going to work really well. So, we're going to we're going to go off of this image right here. So, I'm going to go ahead and license this image here. Cool. Now, I didn't do this ahead of time by the way on purpose because I want to show you guys the process that I would actually use. So, um with Adobe Stock by the way, you can download a preview to see if it's going to work or not. Um but we're just we're just going for it. <laughs> we're just going to do this. So, I went ahead and licensed that image because I I want the top of the trees. So, let's go back into Photoshop here. I'm going to just open it up. We're going to go into my downloads here and just open up this Adobe Stock download here. Okay. There we go. And we're going to use our move tool and just click and drag and move it right in here. So we're going to hit F for full screen. Now, I have a couple of things on my side in this case and that's that the background is out of focus, right? It's kind of blurry. It's it's all good there. So the first thing I want to do is just grab my crop tool and we're just going to crop this up a little bit. Okay? I want to give myself plenty more room and I want to give myself a good challenge here, you know? We're live on Adobe, the pressure's on. Like let's do it, it's right? On. We're doing it live. <laughs> so, we're we're just going to pop this in here. Now, basically what I want is like this top of the tree here. Okay? I want that to be the top of the tree over there. So, I'm going to just start off with a selection tool. Okay? I I'm just going to grab the area of the tree that I actually want. We're just going to go ahead and grab this. 
I'm going to hit Controller Command J to pop that onto a new layer. And then I, I can just make that invisible for now. Okay. Now keep in mind, this is out of focus, right? So it's okay if it doesn't match perfect, right? It, it's really, uh, it, it's going to get a blur on it anyway. So let's go ahead and just lower the opacity a little bit. Controller Command T for transform. And then we're just going to bring this up here. There we go. Something like that. And you can kind of just basically like replace what was going on there. Okay. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to make it an exact perfect match. You can actually just kind of replace whatever you're doing. That's totally okay. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I match this in terms of light and color. Uh, that's important. And I also want to make sure that I match this in terms of blur. So what we're going to do is I just want to click on my background layer and take a sample of that and hit Controller Command J and put this over here so I can kind of like look at what I'm trying to match while I do it, you know, because it's kind of covering it up, right? Okay, so this is my layer. I need it to be a blur. I need to change my colors. I need to do a little bit more matching for everything to work, right? So the first thing that I want to do is turn this into a smart object. So I'm going to right click on here. I'm going to go to convert to smart object. And what this is going to allow me to do is make sure that I can undo my filters at any time or that I can change them. So now that it's a smart object, we're going to go to filter. We're going to go to blur and we're going to go to our, uh, there we go. I want to do a lens blur. I also really like this box blur a lot. This can be really nice. Um, looks like lens blur is grayed out because it's a smart object, but let's try blur gallery here. Um, beep, 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 beep. I'm deciding on my blur. I actually want to do the lens blur. So I'm going to make this not a smart object. I'm going to, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go to rasterize layer. Sometimes the, these filters won't let you do that. All right, but that's okay. All right, so we're just gonna do this lens blur and I'm just gonna increase my radius here a little bit. There we go, because I really want this like nice background blur. You can see the lens blur creates these like nice radial elements and that helps a lot. So if it doesn't do it exactly like how I want, you can hit undo. All right, what do you guys think? Did that look pretty good or should I do that a little bit more? Should I do more of a blur on that? Or does that work? Let, let me know in the chat. Yeah, let us know in the chat. It's going to take a couple of seconds for them to see the question, hear the question, because we're in the future, they're in the past. Uh, but yeah, let us know um, how that's looking and if it looks good. Should we do a little more? Should we continue on? I think it looks good. Personally. I think it looks pretty good. All right. Yeah. So we're we're gonna, we're gonna going with it. We got, we got a lot to do. So basically just grab that image, ran a lens blur over it. Now I need to make it a little bit lighter and I need to do a little bit more yellow. Right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab a levels adjustment layer. Okay, we're gonna clip this. So option command G, remember that's this keyboard shortcut here. Okay, we wanna make it a little bit lighter. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to my blue channel and we're just gonna uh, put less blue in it, right? I need it to be a little bit more yellow. There we go. And we're gonna go to our green channel and kind of move this around too. There we go. And let's go to our red channel. So I basically, I matched the blur and then now I'm doing my best to match the color. And actually I think that's starting to look pretty good. What do you think Paco? Yeah, it's looking good. I agree. Uh, we do have two people in the chat saying that I think they wanted more blur on the previous one. More blur. I think it already looks blurry enough, but oh, well, okay. I can see what they mean now that you turned it off. I can it see. Does look it does look a lot more blurrier on the original photo. I could see that. Let's see if we can do a lens blur again on it. Normally yeah. I would normally I would undo that because uh, this lens blur the second go around, you're gonna see we're gonna lose some uh, detail or definition. So let's just hit undo. That's not a problem. There's always undo. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna go to filter, blur and lens blur. Lens blur. Yeah, this is one of those cases where you would really want it to be a smart object, but for some filters, they're so complex that smart object is just not a uh, not an option there. Yeah. All right, there we go. That's gonna be our setting for now. Cool, looks good, thanks for the feedback. Yeah, good feedback. And I'm gonna make it a little bit larger, which is gonna make it look a little bit more blurry too. Oh, right. 
Here we go. So let's grab a levels adjustment layer. We'll just do the same thing again. We'll just go ahead and clip it. We'll make it a little bit larger. I'm going to take my blues and we're going to reduce the amount of blues in there. There we go. And we'll just go to our red channel and push this a little bit more this way here. Dude, I think we're getting a pretty good match there. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want right. it to be pretty good. So now we're gonna take this layer. I'm gonna click on my layer mask and we're just gonna simply start to mask this out up to the current edge. And keep in mind, I'm doing this live. I haven't done this before. This is my first time ever doing this. Yeah, that's 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 big. You know, sometimes people will kind of have a plan of attack and and kind of have this pre-made, but this is a whole new level of live design. And this I commend you for doing it, Aaron. Heck yeah, man! This is the fun stuff. This is what that's it's about. Fun, yeah, that's half the fun. I agree. And I want you guys to like be here for like, hey, how would I actually try to do this uh, for real? You know what I mean? Like if, you know, like if I was doing this for the first time. So I think that looks pretty dang good. I'm happy with yeah. how that looks. Let's go ahead and get this one gone there. All right, now I'm gonna create a new layer on top of this and just go in here with my brush tool and paint in the sky. Just with a brush, you know, nothing fancy here. Mm -hmm. Cause we're gonna use sky replacement as well, believe it or not. Right. Um, Nicholas has a comment that I think he might be right, but if we have time, I think we'll get we'll get to it. We don't have to derail to try and fix it. Um, but he says, isn't the light from the sample coming the other side? Yeah, I think so. I guess... so. Let's go ahead and we can see if I can flip this horizontally. Oh, that just does all sorts of weirdness. Yeah, that does all sorts of weirdness. But I'm going to actually show you uh, something really cool we can do in just a second, too. Yeah, and like I said, let, let's not derail. Let's just continue on. And if we have some time, maybe we can address that. Yeah, we're, I'm going to show you something soups dupes cool in just a second. Soups the dupes. <laughs> soups the dupes. All right. Just a little bit of a time check. We have about three minutes before the artist spotlight. Again, we don't have to go right at the zero mark, but... Cool. We hit zero. We can start thinking about transitioning. Cool. So what I'm going to do in the meantime here is I'm going to just get this mountain in there first. And then when we come back, I've got the soups dupes cool method that we're going to show you. Soups dupes method. Soups dupes right method. Here with Aaron. With Aaron Nasi. <laughs> with Aaron Nasi on the soups dupes. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my lasso tool and just kind of like paint in the rest of this mountain range uh, about how I think it's going to be. Doesn't need to be right. Uh, then we're going to use our brush tool. I'm going to sample this color and then just fill that with a new layer there. Okay. And then this is just going to get a blur. So we're just going to go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And then whenever you're remaking a background or something like this, you always want to make sure you do your uh, whatever's far away. You want to make sure you do that first. Okay. We're gonna to go to filter, blur, and I'm gonna to go to a lens blur as well on this. Actually, let's do a block, box blur. Box blur gives you a nice little preview of what it's gonna look like. And it, if you can see this, it, it'll create this like secondary blur outside of it. And that nice. can help it look like it's a, it's a real element there. All right, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna create a new layer and clip that. This is going to get lighter on the top. Okay. There we go. Let's go ahead and lower the opacity of that. And then you can see how it kind of gets a little bit bluish on the top of there. I'm going to go ahead and just, there we go. I want to clip that too. So option command G, we're going to clip that. And I'm like actually painting in chromatic aberration here or diffraction or whatever this is. Very cool. All right. And then this is going to get a little bit of a blur too. So whenever you're painting in uh, stuff like this, you're trying to recreate some elements in your background. You always want to start off with the far away elements first and then work towards the near elements. Okay. So that's why I'm kind of starting off with this, uh, the mountain in the background here. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint in the bush in the foreground. 
All right. All right, and then I'm just adding a little bit more texture. So just like we did when we were painting it over the students, you know, I started off with my general blocking with the colors of the mountains and stuff like that. And then I'm kind of giving in a little bit more detail as I come in and, and paint this in. There we go. All right, change this from normal to multiply and give those mountains a little bit of detail. Nice, it's looking super good. And this was just a, a solid that you did, right? You just created it? Yeah, I just grabbed the lasso tool really. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna grab Soups my- to dupes. Soups to dupes. I'm gonna grab my smudge tool um, and just kind of push it a little bit because I think it should have a little bit less definition than what I did. So we'll just sample all layers here with my smudge tool. Oh, what was that? Oh, I was on my, uh, uh, there we go. I was on a second, I thought it was the banana tool doing some weird. <laughs> <laughs> banana tool, always getting in the way. All right. No, I'm kidding. We love you, banana tool. All right. I'm going to go ahead and save this because my computer is definitely saying Aaron. When we're done with this part, Aaron, we can transition to the artist spotlight. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and just smudge this in just a little bit after I've created these mountains that don't exist in real life. I'm pretty happy with those mountains. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Look like real mountains. Obviously, I got to put some more, uh, um, you know, bushes in front of them. Right. There we yeah, go. If you have Paint. time, we can we can tackle all that stuff. But I mean, I think just right off the bat for doing it live, it's coming out super super cool, my friend. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do our artist artist spotlight. What do you say? Let's do it. Cool. So I'm gonna switch over to our headshots, and then why don't you pull up our fellow spotlight artist? Ooh, I am so yeah. excited all about. All right, here we go. Cool, so I haven't switched your screen yet, so we're gonna do this in about three seconds. Ready, drum roll, who is our artist spotlight? Brrr. And it is our friend, Toby Shinobi. Toby Shinobi. Toby, I, uh, I really wanna show your work because I think that Toby's work exemplifies so many wonderful things about composition and lighting and just the beauty that can come with simplicity in a photo. Um, also, I want to mention, and I'm so proud of Toby, he just is pre-orders right now, but he's just releasing his first book. And if you go to his uh, Behance slash Toby Shinobi, uh, you can see it right here in the uh, in the link right here. This is actually available to pre-order uh, his, his brand new book, which is absolutely beautiful. I got a chance to uh, actually see his book uh, in person before I left Chicago, and it's Fantastic. So um, this is a collection of his work here, Equilibrium. Wow. And you can see, I mean, Toby's work is, it, it's just, it's so beautifully simple. And you look at these photos and you're like, where is this stuff? Like, you know, what's going on here? And like, how, how do you manage to take this complex world that we live in and make it like so beautifully simple? And, you know, a lot of these spaces, like this is, I'm pretty sure this is from uh, Chicago. And I don't know if Toby's still with us in the chat, but. He is. He, he actually chimed in and he went, hey, so he's with us. He's saying, <laughs> he just said, thank you so much, guys. Uh, yeah. So congratulations, Toby. Everybody in the chat, go ahead and give him a follow. Give him some love on his social channels through Behance. And yeah, yeah. Continue on, Aaron. I'm just absolutely loving the composition and all the geometric shapes that we see in his photography. Yes, there's so much symmetry and so much geometry in these shapes. And it's just, these images just really pull you in, That's you know? Photo. Yeah, I'm just like, man, I can't help but like feel like I am spiraling down with these stairs, you know, as they, as they go down. And, you know, it's stuff like this, like, I don't know where this was, but this could just be like a stairway in like a mall or something, right? And I think it's... a 
It always amazes me when artists look at like an everyday item that millions of people just walk by or walk past and, you know, just a normal part of their life. They look at that a little bit different way and say, this is a piece of art. If it's photographed in the right way with the right angle, the right lens, perspective, everything like this becomes art. And I think that's what's so amazing about Toby's work is like, you know, these they're not like crazy. Uh, they're almost effortless in a way. You know, it's like there's it's not like a model with hair and makeup and lighting and all this stuff, which I love that type of work, too. And I've done a lot of it. Um, but, you know, this is just taking these beautiful places that exist already and, and capturing them in a fantastic way. And that's something that um, I think is is really difficult. And I think Toby does it um, almost effortlessly. Yeah, I agree. And especially that comment you said where, you know, for, for your average person walking by some of these things could be like, yeah, that cool building, I guess. But Toby almost sees it through a totally different lens. He's got this brain working on a different way that's able to look at these compositions and just, I mean, it's it's very, you know, it, it's not so extreme. Like all, all this photography almost makes sense with the way that the leading lines kind of make you spiral down or all these geometric shapes kind of go into this focal point like again here's some more leading lights you see these spirals kind of going up towards that circle and it's all this kind of theme that he's gone going on in his photography and i i really really dig it as well um, i've seen your work before toby i know we had you for max and i was looking at some of the work that you sent us and I, that's the exact impression i got and it's still very very much evident looking at some of your other work so very yeah. cool stuff yeah, Again, was, leading lines check that out just going into that white abyss and it's all very symmetrical it's so, super super cool yeah i was watching a video last night actually it was on cinematography composition which is uh i learned a lot of it uh i learned a lot as a photographer by you know studying cinematography and they talked about all these different things that were naturally drawn drawn to and symmetry is a big one we love symmetry oh, yeah. And also depth in your images. And I love what Toby is doing here because there's so much depth. We get an idea like these repeating structures. We know these ones that are far away are the same sh uh, shape and size as the closer ones. So our brains are automatically drawn right in. So leading lines and anything that can cue your brain into depth is just going to help to kind of pull your eye into these photos and allow you to kind of wander in space. Like if I just looked at this top part, for instance, I'm just scrolling down to this yellow and uh, you know, this yellow painted stairway here. If I just look at the top part of this, let's say that was the picture on its own. We don't really have the leading lines. We don't have the depth and we don't have the symmetry. But as soon as I scroll down and get to the meat of the photo, then we have the leading lines and we have the depth. And I feel like I'm literally being pulled into yeah. that space. Yeah, I think that's another great theme in his photography, um, the depth. He really gives us a sense of depth with the way he compos or compositions his uh, leading lines. And again, here we go. I mean, it's those leading lines that just kind of go in towards that depth. And man, I am very envious, my friend. This is very inspirational photography. The more you look at it, super, super cool. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah, yeah. It's like, how oh, do man. you find all these places? Like what, you know, I yeah, feel Toby, like- do you do you just- I mean, do you run into these by happy chance or are you actively looking at structures like these and actually going out and photographing them? I'd love to know. Yeah. And I feel like I've probably even been in some of these places and just like didn't see it, you know, <laughs> like mm -hmm. you're seeing something that I didn't see, which is, um, it, it's just the mark of a great artist. And it's, it's super cool to, uh, to be able to see all this come, come together. Agreed. I wonder if that's Toby right there. Is that you, Toby? No, I don't think so. No, either. that's that's a, a horse of a different color right there. <laughs> different, different than Toby. But yeah, here's the um, uh, the is Chicago. Yep, this is Chicago. Oh. The Co Cobb Towers in Chicago. But again, we've got these leading lines. We've got you know the buildings here on the right hand side, and it it really does pull you in. It's absolutely it's fantastic. Cool. So if you guys have my friend, yeah, if you haven't already done so, be sure to click on this link here in Toby's bio, pre-order his book. It's absolutely beautiful. I had the opportunity to take a look at it and uh, I'm super proud of Toby. It's very, yeah. very Yeah. Great very job, good. Toby. Again, everybody give that Behance profile a follow, follow him on Instagram. The links that he's got down there is very, very cool stuff. So right on. All right, Aaron. Well, we got about right. 15, a little over 15 minutes, so maybe we can knock out a couple more things and we can call it a day. 
Oh, we can knock out many more things. I'm so excited to show you this next tool, uh, this next little uh, workflow feature in Photoshop, because um, a lot of us know that we can create our own custom brushes in Photoshop. You know, you can go to window and then down to brush settings and you can do things like add scattering to your brushes and, you know, things like change your shape dynamics for your minimum diameter and things like that. And these are tools that, you know, oftentimes will get used. Let me just show you what scattering looks like. Oftentimes will get used with just like the brush itself. But what a lot of folks don't know is that you can actually use this stuff with tools like the clone stamp tool as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to basically make this, uh, make this uh, tool, make this brush available for your clone stamp tool. So what I'm gonna start by doing is I wanna make something that looks like this, these bokeh shapes right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our shape dynamics. We're gonna turn on our size jitter a little bit, my minimum diameter. I'm gonna turn on scattering. We're gonna go ahead and scatter on both axes. On my brush tip shape, we're gonna go ahead and bring up our spacing. So I want something that basically looks like you know, these little bits of bokeh, right? This is, that's my goal here. I'm gonna turn on wet edges, which makes it looks like look like bokeh as well. All right, and I'm gonna bring my hardness there just a little bit, and let's go ahead and bring down our spacing. While you do that, Toby's going, aw, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of love for Toby. A lot of and, love. Uh, comment saying, this is so much fun. Thanks, guys, for letting me know about Toby Shinobi. Caitlin saying, great stream, Paco and Aaron. Congrats on your recent move, Aaron, and beautiful work, Toby. Yeah, great summary right there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, Toby deserves all the love. He's a fantastic artist, a good, good human being. Uh, so check this out. Basically, I'm just making a brush. So I can just change the color here, whatever I want to, just make it this red. So I'm just making a brush, uh, let's go ahead and bring this up, that, you know, has some scattering, has some round, uh, you know, has the, uh, you know, just like kind of hard edges. And I'm trying to imitate this bokeh that I see in my image, right? Like what's going on with this bush and the background and things like that. That's basically what I'm trying to imitate here, right? So I'm just doing all this with the brush. So. Right now, it's just B for the brush tool, regular old brush, change your colors. But we're going to go ahead to my settings here, uh, and I'm going to go to new brush preset. All right, and I'm going to call this bokeh. There we go. Now, I'm not going to capture my brush size, and I'm not going to include tool settings. That's actually important because I want to make sure I can use this with my clone stamp tool as well. So I want to make sure to not check either of those. There we go. So I just made a new brush. Check it out. Bokeh brush. I can right click here with my brush tool and it's right here available for me as Boca. Okay. Cool. And uh, real quick, Shri, I do see your question and request. Unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna have time to get into it. Um, thanks for tuning in, my friend. All right, where were we? All right, so creating this Boca brush. So uh, as we just saw, I was just using that with, with the brush tool, it's super cool. But now I'm gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to my Boca brush that I just made, but I'm with a clone stamp tool now. So now if I sample, let's say I sample the, uh, here we go. All right, let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. If I sample here on the bush, there we go, let's go ahead and clear that away. If I sample right here on the bush, check this out. I'm now able to paint oh, with wow. the bokeh of the bush. And I can still go into my brush settings and if I wanna maybe bring my spacing down a little bit, I can do that as well. So now, if I wanna go in and start painting this bokeh right above this bush here, I can do that. We can see with so much ease, and it's gonna look realistic because I'm literally painting with the shape of the bokeh right here above this bush. So this is with the clone stamp tool, but if I just move this over, you're you're gonna be able to see. In fact, I'll just make a, a solid color layer underneath it that's black so you can see. So this is literally what I just painted with the clone stamp tool. How cool is that? That is super cool. Take notes, everybody. This is a very, very cool effect and works very well for this composition. 
So literally just painting in, and there's also other cool things you can do with the clone stamp tool, because you know if I wanted to just lighten an area, you can see it's darkening a little bit. I can just change my layer blend mode from normal to lighten, and then it's only going to lighten things. So if I just wanted to create some highlights in here, I can do that as well. Incredibly easy and literally just painting more bush and see how well it matches this other bush because I'm literally just painting with, with the same thing. So now the other cool thing that I can do with this is I can start to do this on this tree back here. So let's make our brush a little bit larger because earlier we said, hey, you know, the highlights uh, look like they were coming oh, from the left. There nice. we go. Uh, look like they were coming from the left here. So now I can come back in and paint in my highlights again and I can have them match what's actually happening here in this bush here on the background. Very cool. How neat is that? So literally just using the clone stamp tool with a custom brush to kind of just paint in these highlights exactly where I want them to be. Here we go. Fantastic. And of course I can go in and give this a little bit of a blur if I wanted to do that as well, just to make everything like really blend together well. But basically I'm imitating the shape of leaves here. Right. All right, so check this out. So I've got the general form of the brush. I think I'll make this a little bit less visible so it kind of blends in a little bit better. And now it could use a little bit of a blur. So we're gonna to go to filter, blur. I'm gonna to go to box blur. I like using box blur when I'm trying to um, kind of recreate bokeh. Lens blur or box blur work, works well in my opinion. And look at that. I'm kind of able to change the out. direction of the light here on that image. Aaron's taking care of us. He knew all along how to fix it. <laughs> Check that out, very cool. All good. And then let's go ahead and see if we can do a sky replacement. So we're gonna create a new layer. All right, let's go ahead and just save this out. But how cool is this? If you guys remember, by the way, uh, this is what we started with. So we right. have our subject here. This isn't here. The mountains aren't there. That tree isn't there. And that tree we just pulled from Adobe stock, you know, like That's amazing. Yeah. Very cool stuff. And if and you, you guys, just, you just picked that tree, right? You didn't. Yeah. You just kind of picked that without really planning it. You're like, Hey, this yeah, will work. This is a totally, <laughs> it, work. it was picked live during this broadcast. It's just this tree right here. Um, wow. we, we made it larger. We popped it out of focus. We changed the color of it and, uh, good to go. So pretty Very fun cool. stuff. Let's go to our uh, image and then uh, where was it? Edit. And then we're going to go to our sky replacement. I think we might need cool. to do a. Yeah, just a quick time check. We have about seven ish minutes left. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Sky replacement. Obviously, we got to choose the Moody. right sky here. Here, you know, we got to choose the right sky. It's not going to work if it's, uh, if it's the wrong type of sky. So we're just going to try to choose something that's nice and bright and there we go we need to make sure that our brightness comes up considerable amount there we go let's go ahead and take a look at that sky it looks okay let's take a look at some other options here we want to make sure that our brightness is nice and high now we do want to keep in mind that our um there we go we can scale the sky a little bit here if we want to. We can make it larger or smaller. There we go. I think that's gonna look pretty good. Now, the nice thing about the sky in this uh, in this tool is you don't have to get it perfect here because it's actually gonna to output to new layers. So let's hit okay there. It's gonna output this to new layers and you can see I've got my sky temperature, I've got my sky brightness. But if I look at my original image, it needs still needs to be a little bit lighter, right? And that's okay. Still needs to be a little bit brighter. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna grab a levels adjustment layer. Okay, and I'm gonna bring my darks up and just make those a little bit brighter there. Okay, and then I just want it to be a little bit less saturated. So we're just gonna go to hue slash saturation. A sky can be very subtle. It doesn't have to be 
you know, it doesn't have to be like a crazy intense sky on every image that you choose. Uh, oftentimes that's not actually that realistic. All right, especially based on the lighting of your image. And now the sky could use a little bit of a blur. So let's click on the sky itself. We're gonna go to filter, blur, and I'm gonna go to box blur again. This is one of my favorite blurs uh, when I wanna make something look like it's out of focus. I think box. So, so what does box blur do specifically that you like about it compared to say like a lens blur or Gaussian blur? That's a good question. Um, I'll show you right now. All right, so there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and close that down. So let's just, I'll show you uh, a couple. There we go. So let's show you the three, okay? So this first layer here, we're gonna do a Gaussian blur on this. G for Gaussian blur. So let's just do, Let's do a Gaussian blur on this first one here. So a Gaussian blur just is not gonna have much shape at all. This next blur, we're gonna go to filter and we're gonna go to box blur. And this will retain a little bit of shape. You can see it still has some edges. Sometimes I'll do them in combination. I'll do a box blur and a Gaussian blur. Okay, and then this one will do a lens blur. So filter, blur, and then lens blur on this one. Um, I think that lens blur actually works really well, uh, but it's uh, I don't get to see the preview in real time over here, so I don't wind up using it as much. Uh, and you can't do this with a smart object. So that's a lens blur. So you can see the Gaussian blur is just kind of like an all over the place blur. Box blur will retain edges, which gives the, um, it gives out of focus areas a little bit of depth. And our lens blur um, does work well, but you can see it also created this white box around that object. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll do my box blur and then I'll throw a little bit of a Gaussian blur on there as well. And that just gives me a little bit more definition than, a, uh, than just a straight Gaussian blur. I find nice. it works well for out of focus areas, but yeah, yeah good, good question. And there's also field blur. There's so many different types of right. blurs in photoshop Thanks for taking time to explain that that's very yeah. very helpful and useful cool yeah. uh quick time check about three minutes left so whatever finishing touches we gotta add all right about three minutes cool well i'm just gonna pop a curves adjustment layer on there let's invert this and i'm gonna grab my gradient tool let's just do a foreground to, to transparent gradient here all right and then just pop this in just kind of like a you know general bright sky off to the left and then let's just do a levels adjustment layer i think you know we could go a little bit brighter with some of this stuff here in the tree as well let's just choose a regular brush here there we go there on the left hand side of the tree and we are good to go how cool is that so let's go ahead and see the before and after by the way i want to bring see. this up to the forefront again this is what we use to create this tree on the right hand side so this tree you guys are just joining us here this tree in the background here is actually the same tree as this tree right, right. here you can see there and i just love how you same. took that little piece of that photo and just magically made it work <laughs> Very so let's cool hold, stuff let's hold alt or option here's our before and our after there we go the before and the after fantastic and i think That's maybe tough. yeah i think maybe if i'm just looking at the before and after again it's always helpful by the way to look at before and after i would say you know it's really great on the stream for you guys but it's also great as a creator to look at your before and after because it for me helped me realize like oh this tree needs to be a little bit brighter especially on the left hand side so, Christine says, amazing. I'll be using so many of these tips. Yes. Yeah, it's, been a, it's been really fun two-day streams, man. Really enjoyed watching you work your Lightroom and Photoshop magic. <laughs> it's been so much fun for me. And of course, you can add birds to the sky or whatever it is. But right. then, you know, you can continue if you want to, just like we showed you guys earlier, if you 
you know, if your client comes back and says, hey, we want, you know, even more vertical room on this, you can kind of just continue to go up on this sort of thing. Super easy, crop up, and then just continue to paint in more sky. So we already did our sky replacement, but, you know, if you just want to add more sky, again, use some of those techniques that we showed you. You can go in here, you can use the brush tool for a lot of it. And then, you know, I'm just going to continue to kind of paint in and you know, add fake cloud detail up here and look at that. Just like literally three seconds and we're making more cloud that, detail wow. there. You're so fast, yeah. Aaron, stop it. <laughs> so, uh, you very, know. Very wholesome comment. I just can't express my thanks for how useful this live is for me. Have to go through a lot of these recreating for my work line. Yeah, well said. Very, very useful stuff here. Fantastic. I'm so glad you guys uh such a fun audience today. And look at that. I added the banana tool to Photoshop. Thanks the banana to banana tool. What? It's a two-way street. Learned a lot. Learned a little bit about the banana. Um, so again, <laughs> thank you so much, Aaron, for joining us. It's been an awesome two days. I've had a lot of fun hosting you. It's been a wealth of knowledge. Don't go anywhere because we have the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge afterwards with Andrew Hawkrattle followed by some packaging design with Jack. He was an illustrating machine last, or sorry, yesterday. So if you want to learn about illustration and how to make some branding for a wine glass, stick around for that. It was really fun. Then of course we have the draw along with Kyle Webster wrapping us up today. So again, thank you, Aaron. It's been a very, very fun time. Um, and we'll see you pretty shortly. Bye everybody. Bye everyone.